Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host. Thanks very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Now, before I get started on this episode with some auto updates, I just want to remind everybody, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, would much appreciate it if you do. You can, uh, you know how to do that. Click the subscribe button and all that. Also, uh, if you're not aware, I've been doing audio podcasts for quite some time since I started this channel, actually. I've got about 37 audio podcasts that are out there on various streaming platforms, and I would encourage you to check them out. I just uh, went on the Amazon and Audible platform this week, so you can get my podcast now there. And uh, check them out, because I have guests from all over the world talking about various different aspects of the EV landscape. Quite fascinating stuff. I learn a lot every time. Let me get right into today's news stories. All right, my first story is about the long-awaited VW ID Buzz. You know, I've been uh, talking about that for a few episodes, been a lot of hype about it. Well, uh, earlier this week, it was finally revealed by Volkswagen at its premiere. Um, and I watched some of it. Uh, it was very, very short, so that's pretty good about it. Um, and it was felt as really, VW thinks it's one of their most exciting vehicle launches in the world this year. So far, <laughs> being into March, I would agree with that. Now, um, it's going to be available in Europe first, and this version of the 4.71 meter long electric van will start with a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack at market launch, and the gross energy about 82 or so. And it will come in both a five-seater and cargo versions. And again, this is pertaining mainly to the European ver uh, European offering. It'll be offered in a single rear-wheel drive motor, a variant for now. And of course, everything is based on the MEB platform, just like the ID4, the ID3, uh, all those ID5 as well. Now, this motor produces 150 kilowatts of power, somewhere in the 209, 210 horsepower range, 220 or so pound feet of feet of, feet of torque. That's what I'm trying to say, which will take the ID Buzz to a top speed of up to 145 kilometers an hour. No reason to be going faster than that in a minivan. Now, the only thing that VW does not yet specify uh, is the range according to WLTP or anything right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it should follow later. However, if we look at what's out there on the MEB platform today, we can kind of extrapolate an expected EPA rated range of about, I would say, 220 to 250 miles and, you know, maybe 370 to 400, 400 and a quarter kilometers, that sort of range. Because in North America, we're just going to get the larger battery uh, pack offering uh, at that time. So I think it's going to be very capable. Uh, obviously, it's not going to have the highest efficiency because it's a brick on wheels, face it, but that's the desire of this thing. Now, AC charging power is the usual 11 kilowatts, which seems to be the new norm standard now. And VW specifies the DC charging power as up to 170 kilowatts. So this is likely to be obviously a short-term peak value because the duration for the charging process from 5 to 80% is around 30 minutes claimed by VW. So I expect this to have a very similar charging curve that we're seeing today on the ID4 and the ID3. Now for cargo space, the passenger version can still load up to 1,121 liters with five people on board. It's a lot of space. And with the second row of seats folded down, and of course, consequently, then only for room for two people, because there is no third middle seat there. Uh, you can hold up to 2,250 liters. Wow, that's quite a lot of room. Now, the situation is different a bit for the ID Buzz cargo version, which can hold up to 3.9 cubic meters or about 3,900 liters of space, which is phenomenal. With its fixed partition, the cargo area also offers space for two EUR or your pallets. Now, you have to remember about the weight loads. This isn't going to be something that's going to carry super, anything super heavy, but the permissible total weight is about 3,000 kilograms for payload uh, for weight carrying and a maximum payload of 650 kilograms. So, you know, definitely going to be for last mile delivery applications, small business applications, you know, Amazon drivers, all these kind of things that aren't really carrying a, a heavy, heavy uh, load like uh, pipes or metal fittings or anything like that. So quite, quite capable. For other features, the ID Buzz uses familiar MEB technologies, such as the LED matrix headlights and the ID light. The interior features a digital cockpit with a 5.3-inch screen driver display and either a 10-inch touchscreen in the center or a 12-inch version with the optional Discover Pro trim. These are all things that we've already seen in the ID3 and the ID4 and the ID5, so they're keeping with the same stuff. Now, what 
is a bit different is uh, in unlike those other previous models that I mentioned, is the gear selector is no longer located on the driver's display, but it is designed as a separate stock behind the steering column lever. I think that's gonna be much easier for people to figure out. Now there is a lot of technology on this and that's really the leap forward that, you know, besides the electrification from the older minibus and microbus uh, days of past, that there's a lot of technology and new assistant systems on this as well that uh, is coming. There's something called a memory function, which remembers the automated parking on a previously saved route. So once you teach it, uh, how to park in a certain spot, it can remember that. There's a travel assist uh, with swarm data uh, technology that enables partially automated lateral and longitudinal guidance within the system limits over the entire speed range. And there's one other tech feature that I did want to mention, and it was called Car2 Car, I believe that they uh, came out with, which is a communications technology that uh, the autos start talking to each other when they're on the road. And that is significant, folks, because that's kind of the start of when we can, in my opinion, start seeing full driver, you know, auto, auto uh, automation uh, and autonomy really start coming out. Now, there is towing capacity as well, um, and it's also not mentioned um, exactly, but we do know that MEB models like the ID4 offer about 1,000 kilograms with the rear-wheel drive and up to 1,400 kilograms in the all-wheel drive version. So we're expecting that this should be fairly similar for the ID Buzz. Now, official prices have not yet been revealed. Most recently, there were reports, however, that the base price for the passenger car model, the five-seater, would be about 55 to 57,000 euros with the 77 kilowatt hour battery. However, this has not been confirmed. Now, market launch for Europe is scheduled in May, so we won't have to wait very long to get more info on the pricing. And I just want to end the, this particular segment by saying congratulations, VW. I think you've done a bang up job on this. I've um, been watching some of the early first looks on it, and some people have already been driving it uh, when it was still in camo mode uh, over the last month in, in parts of Europe. And all the feedback has been extremely positive. I don't see why this is not going to be a huge, huge hit for VW. And if they can price it um, at a price point that, that's meaningful, that can maybe get some incentives in different regions, this thing's going to sell off the charts, folks, because I would love to pick up one of these, to be honest with you. I think it's got, it's small enough to fit in a garage, but big enough to do a lot of things with and still uh, fairly economical from an overall EV efficiency. I think it's going to be quite good. So congratulations to VW and look forward to seeing more. Now, staying on the minivan note, Fiat has unveiled an all-electric e Ulysses, they call it, which can be ordered in Italy, Germany, France, and Austria starting this month, and it goes on sale in May. Now, the powertrain has a single 100 kilowatt e-motor and can be combined with a 50 or 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. The larger battery uh, provides an estimated WLTP range of about 330 kilometers, and the smaller battery uh, is about 80% full in 30 minutes uh, and a 100% DC charging station while it takes 45 minutes at 100 uh, DC fast charging station to charge up the 75 kilowatt hour battery. That's what I'm trying to read from that piece. Now, now this van has a very nice feature to which Fiat aims to position um, what they call a living room on four wheels. You know, together with the modularity of the interior and its capacity to accommodate up to eight people, these features make it really a great choice as transportation services type vehicles for hotels and taxis and VIP transfers and all that kind of stuff. So really, really great choice for that, that potential use case. You can have up to 12 interior configurations uh, are possible within this van and in the eight seater version and up to 16 variations of the interior in the seven seater. So quite interchangeable. The e Ulysses is going to be built or is built at the Hordain plant in France and no further specs or pricing has been announced, but you know, it's, seems to be on the heels of a minivan week here so or electric minivan week so it's good to see that fiat's come out with something as well uh, that not only can go after a certain market segment market segments but be great for all consumers as well So switching gears to talk about Sony and Honda, they've announced that uh, that they plan to start a joint venture to make and sell electric vehicles. 
Now, the company will be established later in this year, and deliveries of some sort of EVs, they don't really say what, will begin by 2025. Now, this new company is expected to plan, design, develop, and sell the EVs, but not to own and operate the manufacturing or a manufacturing facility for it. Honda said that they're going to handle all the production at one of their factories around the world. I don't know where that's going to be yet. Now, as we know from the past, Sony has already been moving forward with their EV plans with their Vision S01 and the Vision S02. So we really have to see and wait and, uh, and kind of understand how this thing turns out, whether Sony is going to change their plans on their own and combine it with a Honda development. We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, I'm just excited that, hey, you know, as I always say, the more companies that are getting into the EV mix, the better it is for the market and for consumers because more choice is great. So bring it on and we'll stay tuned for more. Now, switching gears back to General Motors, and you've heard me talk about GM an awful lot over the last few months, and that's because there's a lot going on with them. Well, they just recently further teased its uh, uh, Chevrolet Blazer uh, all-electric vehicle. It's a crossover vehicle, which is going to be due to arrive next year in the spring of 2023. And they've teased it in the form that they're going to be offering it in an SS performance model. Now, if you're familiar with Chevrolets, the SS badge stands for Super Sport, and it's really been a Chevy mainstay since the leading edge of the muscle car era, typically corresponding to a higher level of performance given to that model with that badge. So GM teased out some brief videos, which really don't show too much, um, with some special wheels for the SS, along with an extending the, the charge port cover. So really small shots here. Um, the Blazer is one of the two upcoming affordable electric crossovers on the way. This is kind of what I want you to take away from this story. Although it arrives first, GM has provided a more extensive look at the $30,000 Chevy Equinox EV that's due to also be on sale in 2023. Chevrolet is also developing a touchscreen interface that appears to be an evolution of what's already been detailed for the Cadillac Lyric, but new for the Equinox and the Blazers. Now, GM has said that the, the Chevy's electric crossovers will be affordable models, not premium offers. They still they keep talking about under 30000 and so that's quite significant. And the two crossovers really set the stage for an even lower price GM EV due around hopefully the middle of this decade, including potentially a successor to the Bolt EV and maybe the Bolt EUV. We'll have to wait and see. I, I'm so excited about hearing things about lower cost because we really need to get to that cost parity point sooner than later. And I really, really, again, am stoked about GM, about what they're doing. I can't really kind of come across enough on that. Um, the, the billions of dollars that these companies, not just GM, but others are putting into the EV landscape to build out a, a, a plan um, for the next 5, 10 to 20 years is phenomenal amounts of money. And again, I'm glad to see GM continuing down that path. And say thanks very much for watching this episode of the EV Revolution Show. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for going rambling on a little bit long there, but I think it's important to just understand the reality of the EV market space. If you are, again, if you haven't subscribed on YouTube, please do. It would mean a lot. Uh, if you are supporting me on Patreon, I really am always uh, truly blessed and humbled by that. I thank you very much. You can look at the link below and uh, see the website and see how you can support me, even a dollar a month if you'd like. Everybody continue to stay safe and watch the EV landscape because as I mentioned earlier, there's tons of stuff going on, so much that I just can't cover every story. Just try to pick a few that are of interest. I've got some new, uh, more car reviews coming up soon. I'm uh, getting another car next week. Uh, and then April, I've got three vehicles, so it's going to start heating up this spring for car review. So you'll start seeing a few more of those come from my show. And I'll continue with the odd news stuff here and there as well. If you have some suggestions, by the way, for topics or stories you want me to cover, don't hesitate to email me and send it in. My contact information is coming right up. So until the next show, again, everybody stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.